Lighting and animation are the two most common tutorial requests I receive. And a product reveal video like you see on screen here touches on both of these topics, so I thought it would be a cool video to do a breakdown on. Now, many of my past tutorials show how each of these steps are done in detail, so this video will focus on my process and the reasoning behind each step. Now, to follow along with this tutorial, click the link below to get your project files. Submit your email to enter the file vault and click the corresponding download link. Now I saved the project for this tutorial in Keyshot 10. So if you're using an older version like Keyshot 9, download the project file for the bent plywood chair from a previous tutorial of mine. First, I dragged the Keyshot file into the real-time view to import it. If you do not know how to unpack a KSP file, watch my tutorial on file management linked above. Next, I open the geometry view changed the real-time view to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and created a right-hand three-quarter view camera. Next, I changed the ground plane to a plastic material with some roughness and white specular values. Using the geometry view, I duplicated the ground plane and moved it into position to create a wall. I repeated this step several times to create three walls and a light. I scaled down the fourth plane and changed its material to an area light with a value of 100 watts. I then opened the light manager to allow me to make quick changes to the brightness of this light. I adjusted the wall placement a bit and changed some roughness values on the ground plane to make it slightly more reflective. I set the HDRI brightness to zero to increase the contrast in the scene and then began moving and scaling the light to create sharper shadows. Next, I spent quite a bit of time dialing in the placement of the area light, chair, and walls, and camera to get the shadows to fall just right. I really wanted a shadow of the chair to show on the back wall before the shadow from the front wall eclipsed it. Nailing the light placement before animating it is crucial to getting the results I wanted. To address the blown out specular highlights on the wall and floor, I created a high contrast photographic image style. This essentially clamps the white values and creates more natural looking highlights. I pushed the contrast and exposure around a bit, desaturated the color, and explored some bloom and denoising options. So, if you want to take the most direct path to learning Keyshot, then check out my Keyshot Rendering Masterclass. It's already helped hundreds of others level up, including designers from Nike, Dell, Logitech, Sonos, Garmin, Trek, Pepsi, and lots of others. See, I designed the Keyshot Rendering Masterclass to be the most comprehensive course available while still making it super easy to understand. And what makes it different is the unique combination of bite-sized feature-based videos coupled with follow-along project-based lessons. This course will help you build an intuitive understanding of how Keyshot works. Then you'll be able to create and explore within Keyshot without getting bogged down by the technical aspects of the software. My goal is to help you convert your ideas to digital images. When you enroll, you'll get access to over 100 video lessons, quizzes, an active comments section, private Discord server channel, and project files to maximize your learning. So check out the link in the description below to learn more. I hope to see you there. To add some motion, I selected the area light in the scene tree, right-clicked on it, and then chose to add translation animation. I placed the light behind the back wall as a starting point, then increase the duration of the animation to 4 seconds. I increase the value of the translation in the x-axis until the light disappeared behind the front wall. I also added a negative y translation to make the light drop over the course of its animation path, causing the chair shadow to creep a little bit further up the wall. To animate the camera, I right-clicked on the camera in the scene tree and chose Animation, Orbit. Using the geometry view for reference, I ended up with a value of negative 10 degrees. I then set the duration to 4 seconds to match the light animation. Now, at this point, I didn't really like the way the bloom was looking, so I killed it and decided to add it in post. To make the scene more interesting, I added textures to the ground plane. I used a procedural granite texture and color to number node to add some variation in roughness. As the light reflects off the ground, this will break up the uniform reflection. I added an image-based concrete texture as well to the bump channel to add another layer of detail. Next, I wanted to address the ugly fireflies appearing on the ground underneath the chair legs. First, I tried the denoise and firefly filter, but the firefly filter killed the specular highlights on the chair legs and resulted in ugly aliased artifacts. I abandoned the denoise and firefly filters altogether. 
To try and address those fireflies, I decided to increase material samples. In order to do this on the ground floor, I changed the material type to a plastic transparent material and made sure the transmission values were set to black, which made it appear the same as a normal plastic. Then I doubled the material samples to 24. I also increased the area lights material samples to 24. Doing these two things will in theory reduce the likelihood of fireflies when I go to do the final render. I used a region render to see how many samples it would take for those fireflies to resolve. I gauged about 600. Finally, I checked to see if interior mode might help at all, and it didn't, so I decided to render in product mode. I chose to render the final output at 1920 by 1080 p resolution. I created new folders for the frames to be rendered into and used maximum samples mode set at 600 samples for the final render quality. To offer me maximum dynamic range and image quality, I chose to render in EXR format. This will give me a series of images that I will compile into a video editing program called DaVinci Resolve. I used network rendering to let my two computers render this animation overnight, and it took 9 hours, 17 minutes, and 5 seconds to render the 120 frames on 128 cores in CPU mode. In DaVinci Resolve 17, I imported the EXR sequence into the media bin. Despite being a series of still frames, Resolve identifies the sequence as a single item. I also set the input color space to linear, so Resolve would apply the correct gamma to the viewer. To learn more about gamma, follow the link above to an article I wrote on my website on this topic. At this point, I noticed some fireflies that I didn't fix in Keyshot that are appearing on the rear leg of the chair. I did what I could in the color page to denoise this section, but in hindsight, I could have used a mask to only apply the denoising to this one problematic area, but oh well. I then sharpened the clip to compensate for the softening effect of the denoise filter. In the Fusion tab, I used a soft glow node to add some bloom around the specular highlights. I also chose to key the strength of this effect because it was too heavy handed as the brightness of the scene decreased. Back in the Color tab, I did some final color correction, cooling off the shadows and warming up some of the highlights, as well as desaturating the clip a little bit. The final step was to set my encode settings and render out the final clip. And here's what we ended up with. So there's an overview of my process for this four little second animation. I hope you got inspired and learned a few tips. Also, this is the first time sharing any DaVinci Resolve content on my channel. It's a tool I've leaned heavily on over the past couple of years, and we'll be sharing more about it in my Keyshot Animation Masterclass, which should be launching sometime in early 2022. Till next time, happy rendering.